This is Arkansas 11, KTHV Little Rock. Good evening, I'm Chuck Dovish. As another year draws to a close, we'd like to once again reflect back on our travels and bring you the best of our travels throughout the state called the Land of Opportunity. Once again, we'll show you why this state is so unique. We'll show you the heart of the nation and the people of mainstream America. We'll show you the backbone of this country and those people responsible for the good of America. There's still a lot of good left, you know, despite what you may hear or see on the news. So join us, won't you, for Travel in Arkansas and get set for a different outlook on this land of opportunity. Our first adventure takes us to a cliff, similar to this one, where we were introduced to a very popular way of enjoying the rugged Ozark Mountain countryside. It's a way which I'll never forget. In the upper Buffalo River Wilderness area, Northwest Arkansas, State Tourism Director Mike Mills showed us how to really travel. It's called repelling. Ever since there was a mountain, a man wanted to climb a mountain, but he had to have a way of getting down once he got up on top. And of course, uh, rappelling is the uh, descending of a cliff or side face of a mountain, and, uh, and that's how it actually came about, is uh, instead of having to climb back down, this was a way of hooking a rope onto something, a rock or a tree or whatever, and uh, descending down the face of a cliff. Much easier said than done. Of course, to Mike Mills, it's no big deal at all. All you got to do is just kind of let yourself down, uh, just keep backing up, let out a little bit, dig your heels in, get your weight on the rope, and here we go. There you go. Oh, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look all the way at the bottom. <laughs> That's really not that far. Oh, sure only well over a hundred feet. But then I always did enjoy doing those off-the-wall stories. With this one, we were at the point of no return. Now, I know you've traveled Arkansas in a lot of ways. <laughs> but Lord, we ain't never traveled Arkansas this way. <laughs> the harness was comfortable. What was uncomfortable was knowing that your life was literally on the line. My life insurance agent warned me about these type of stories. I felt some security as long as I had my feet on the ledge, but as we descended and ran out of ledge, then it became a hopeless feeling of dangling off the side of the world. The good earth beneath never looked better. And after about a 20 minute firm hold of the rope, it was a relief indeed to finally let go. But the best feeling of all was to have both feet firmly planted on solid ground once again. Before all these leaves fell and autumn wasn't such a chore, photographer Ken Hoyle and I took a drive along some of our state's scenic highways for a look at Arkansas's autumn. Skimming across the Arkansas River, dawn arrives beginning another Indian summer day throughout the South. It's the time of year when country roads lead us to the best time in the Ozarks. The mountain creeks are surrounded with autumn's flow of gold in the valleys. It's the time of year when the fruits of farm labor are offered for our pleasure at roadside stands. Pumpkins for jack-o'-lanterns on Halloween night. The taste of summer past is waiting to be released in the brilliance of apples or the golden temptation of cider basking in the Indian summer sunlight. Autumn, in many ways, is a completion of all the good that is here on this planet called Earth. The fields are ready to serve and feed the millions in this country and in other countries. The deed, the task, has been accomplished once again. Autumn, the time to reap from a year's worth of work and look forward to the good of next year.
It was along a similar, tranquil, picturesque mountain creek that we agreed to a float trip to top all float trips. And we're not talking about a peaceful Hiawatha canoe trip either. What's the next best thing to running the rapids down the Colorado River? Taking a raft and kayak excursion down the Big Piney in Arkansas. Now, this isn't your average weekday family floating trip, so hold on to your easy chairs because I have a feeling we're in for quite a ride. Woo! <laughs> I thought floating the Buffalo River was a challenge, but that was kid stuff compared to this. The Big Piney northwest of Russellville is called a creek, but when the water is up, look out. The 67 miles of so-called creek turns into a raging, challenging river. It is strictly for experienced kayakers and canoeists only. If you can do one of these kayak rolls underwater without swallowing half the river, then you're ready. Well, that's, that's where the lessons come in. Uh, a person doesn't need to just to get in a kayak and without any kind of lessons at all and get in and try to run a river. He needs to have proper instruction before, and that's part of it. To, to, it's called the Eskimo roll, and to explain to you how to, you know, to roll it back up. It's real easy. It's just, uh, it's just getting your timing down. The technology in whitewater boating has mushroomed in the past few years. It's a much safer sport now than it was a short time ago with training and equipment like a plastic boat like the one I'm paddling now and good life jackets and rescue technique that we know how to do. I think it's a reasonably safe sport. It's what some people prefer to call a calculated risk because there is certainly some risk involved but if you work hard at it and you learn what to do, well I think it's a safe and exciting sport. A sport which is fun even if you're only admiring the miles of scenery unspoiled by humans. On the benches alongside our great small town courthouses, older generation America can be found whittling the time away. We visited one such group to hear their story. On any given sunny day, you can find them here on the benches in front of the Boone County Courthouse in Harrison. Some were farmers in their earlier years, some were barbers, and some were working on the railroad. But now they've put away their plows, their clippers, and their railroad spikes. A pocket knife and a piece of cedar are the center of life for the Harrison Whittling Gang, passing the days of that long-awaited so-called retirement. It's all right if we've got something planned to do, but a fellow that's kind of thinned up or something, something like this is about all there is left. And you can make yourself enjoy it or forget it, don't make any difference. What are you but working on there? Nothing in the world, just killing time. <laughs> Some of them have been gathering here for 25 years. When a member doesn't show up for a day or so, they'll know to check on him. For some, each other is all they have. So together, they whittle, watch the world go by, show off some knives, trade some knives, you wouldn't trade that for two new knives, would you? Yeah, he did. Whittle some more, take a good chaw every now and then, but most of all, laugh at one another. Green, froggy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we enjoy it. A bunch of us get together and kid each other and trade knives. Whittle. Politic. Politic a little. <laughs> kid each other. So as long as the cedar lasts, the jokes last, and the chewing tobacco keeps coming, the Harrison Whittling Gang will continue to make the most out of retirement. Loneliness is something they know they can battle as long as a steady hand is kept on a pocket knife. Now, I'm not going to try to sell you any swampland, but there is a place near the Louisiana line I'd like for you just to look at. No obligation, right after this. While traveling Arkansas, sooner or later, you're bound to run into a swamp. 
we did near Crossit. And if you ever go down there, you better just beware. That is, unless you know Homer Birchfield. In South Arkansas, several miles from the Louisiana state line, west of Crossip, there's an area known simply as the swamp. If you ever go back in the woody swamp, where you better not go at night. There's things out there in the field of the woods that make a strong man die to cry. The swamp is actually the Felsenthal National Wildlife Refuge, 65,000 acres of sportsman's paradise. We went along on a little expedition with the Homer Birchfield, who's hunted and fished this swamp for about 50 years. If there was anyone who could tell us some stories, we figured he could. Man, you couldn't, you ain't got enough tape for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some wonderful time down here. Knew some good people. Killed turkeys and squirrels. There wasn't many deer back long then. You didn't ever see no deer fish, just any amount, any time, anywhere. But even if you aren't fishing or hunting, being here for the beauty alone is worth the trip. The Washita River cuts through the refuge and occasionally you may capture the river being used to haul timber, reminiscent of the old riverboat days. One thing's for sure, you will see wildlife in the air and those creepy creatures in the water. Friendly looking fella, isn't he? Anyway, back to the fishing. And for that, Homer Birchfield has a sure fire technique. Well, it's made off of a Keese patent. Henry Keese. He passed on, I think he quit making them in 53. I've been using one since 35. So, they're not a new thing. <laughs> Outdated or not, it catches fish. So bring along some mosquito repellent, a fishing pole, and a big stick, and venture into the swamp. If you ever go back in the woody swamp, where you better not go at night. There's things out there in the field of the woods that make a strong man die to cry. Farming of today has come of age with enclosed air conditioned tractors. But there's one farmer in Wilburn who never had one of these luxury contraptions and never wants one. Oh. 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 We visited an old friend the other day to show you something else about old Rex Harrell of Wilburn. Oh, this really a, an art, this thing, really being able to really wrap this stuff up. Huh? This is why we visited Rex again, because you just don't find this oh. anymore. Just a simple way of life. Uh, it's just something I grew up with and I haven't advanced, I guess, where you'd put it. <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely not easier. It's, uh, to me, it's more enjoyable because them old horses are flesh and blood. I can talk to them. Come here, oh, oh, come here. Oh, oh, oh. With his horses, Big John and Junior, Junior's the bigger one, Rex believes the old way is still the better way. I can have them to turn without even touching the lines. Just uh, whoop, gee, John. Whoop, gee, John. Gee, come here. Whoop, gee, gee. Come here, John. Whoop, gee, gee. Whoop, whoop. Using the universal language for horses, Rex plows, drags, and cultivates his land spanning 120 acres. I've got them trained when I want them to turn short. I say, whoa, gee, whoa, gee, or whoa, ho, whoa, ho. Yeah, and if I'm just turning along, I say, come here, ho, or come here, gee. So this is why we visited old Rex Harrell once again, to show that in the 20th century, there are still men who worked the soil in a proven method that was the only method ages ago. Do you think you'll ever get a tractor? No, I don't, I don't have enough use for a tractor. I'm getting too old for that kind of stuff. I'm going to play on these horses for another few years and forget about it, I guess. Arkansas has its own wild kingdom where you can actually be out with the animals and even touch them. So put on your safari helmets because we're going to go out on a safari near Gentry. We have taken you through swamps and all sorts of wilderness in Arkansas, but never in eight years have we taken you to the wilds of northwest Arkansas through the wild wilderness drive through safari. So join us in our jungle swamp buggy and for a trip you'll never forget. Get out of here. Move.
What began as a hobby 20 years ago has turned into a full-fledged 180-acre drive-through safari for Ross Wilmoth, who can never seem to get rid of those pesky ostriches. You want to get a picture of the vehicle, you say? Quit that. <laughs> hey, big dummy. See if that thing's old. He got my, my hat then. It? Okay. Kind of wish you got a log for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the old hat. <laughs> Get out of here. <sighs> now, your time at a knot. Nobody said shooting a safari was going to be easy, especially for photographer Ken Hoyle. Boy, just shine your face right there. There you go. Don't you peck me. The tigers, for some reason, wanted to get closer and closer. Yeah, you look in your lips like you want this photographer from the back. Ross has more than 100 varieties of wild animals he acquired from zoos all across the country for his own personal Africa. You just enjoy it. It's like some people like to uh, hunt or fish, and I don't like to do either one. I just like to mess with the animals. What sort of wild animal is this, Ross? That's a white tail no. It's in the Wellabies family. It's a what? White tail no. Ah. You said this is the second of the meanest you have here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. the meanest? My wife. <laughs> Most of the animals love to be fed, except for this camel. He wanted our female guide. We managed to get by the ostriches, but we were surrounded by monkeys, hungry monkeys, who knew we did have bananas. All in all, it was more fun than a Tarzan movie. Well, I finally decided what I want for Christmas, a train set, a very special train set. I'll show you what I mean right after this. Grown-ups usually don't want train sets for Christmas, but we managed to find the ideal train set us big kids just can't pass up. North of Hot Springs, there is the train set of train sets. In Phil Hale's backyard, along a three-quarter mile long, one-eighth scale track, the age of steam drives on. things act like they are actually alive. Uh, each one has its own characteristics. It uses its own amount of water, has its own amount of draft, and it's just like a living, breathing person. Well, this is just something that gets in your blood. I've been interested in locomotives all my life, when I was a kid even. We used to, my mother used to take me over to Texas County when they had, <clears throat> when they had the old steam locomotives. Used to sit up on the high bank and watch the switch engines all day long. These firm believers of steam are members of the International Brotherhood of Live Steamers who never forget that thrilling moment when they took their locomotive on its maiden run. That was a rewarding experience the first time I put this on a track, pulled that throttle back, and it took off down the track. That was a that was worth the three years. But when a man gets blue, he grabs him a train and rides. You have to be a little bit leery that you can roll it over, you know, and uh, you have to be careful that you don't let yourself forget euphoric and just let her roll because it'll really go. If you turn the throttle loose, why, it'll take off. I said, look out, here she comes, she's coming. Look out, there she goes, she's gone. Screaming straight through Texas like a mad dog cyclone. Well, now I know what I want for Christmas. I just don't know whether it's going to fit underneath the tree or not. <laughs> I'd even settle for just a locomotive. A special program about Arkansas would not be complete if we didn't include antebellum homes and southern bells, as only Helena can provide. Well, 
Once a steamboat port, the town of Helena along the Mississippi has been described as a living monument to the charm of the Old South. That charm begins with Southern Bells and continues with stately magnolia-shaded antebellum homes just waiting for Rhett and Scarlet to enter. It was Mark Twain who said, Helena occupies one of the prettiest situations on the river. And it was an early settler, Sylvanus Phillips, who gave Phillips County its name, and the county seat was named for his daughter, Helena. Along with the graceful antebellum homes of the town is also Victorian elegance, Southern style. Wealthy merchants and rivermen built splendid Victorian and Edwardian homes, adding to the town's Southern charm. Here, the New South is not that much different from the Old South. Southern hospitality in Helena is stronger than ever. There are some stories we just don't want to leave. This is one of them. Sometimes we'd rather continue taking part in an era that's left only to history books and movies. But I guess we must return to 1984. And to... Don't leave. What will I ever do without you? Frankly, my dear, we have a deadline to meet. That is the end for the time being. But now that you know what our travels are all about, let me extend this invitation to you to join us weekdays on 11 Action News as we continue our travels throughout the state, seeking out those people and places worth knowing about. They're the type of stories you always wanted to see, but maybe didn't know where to turn to to find them. Well, now you know. They are indeed the stories that still have happy endings. See you on down the road.